the fact is that we talk here a lot about faith in guiding what we do, but oftentimes it's limited to a particular version of faith. And your presence and the folks that work within Texas Impact allow the legislators to see that faith encompasses a much greater perspective than sometimes people here think is the case. Your voice is critical. So I can't emphasize enough how grateful I am that y'all take the time to do this, that you show up in our offices. Um, I was speaking with uh, a Methodist uh, uh, Sunday school class the other day. And uh, one of the things that someone in the class said is, who participates through Texas Impact and, and other ways, is that she was so glad as a, she happens to be a Democrat, she was so glad as a Democrat to be able to go to Republican offices and thank them and build those relationships with them, especially in this case over, over uh, anti-voucher legislation. So again, it's, it's, a, it's a broader perspective, it's a more inclusive perspective, and uh, that's really necessary here for us especially where we are right now with such polarization and such limited vision for what we can be. Um, so I'm gonna say a little bit about women's health care, maybe have a few minutes for a few questions before I have to head out to something else, but um, I am the chair of the Women's Health Caucus, which means that I am actively involved with women's health care issues, and, I, and I'm seeing what y'all are passing out and glad to see that uh, there are some things we were able to accomplish this session, thanks to people like y'all who showed up and testified, sent cards and letters and that sort of thing. Um, I'm intrigued by the uh, different faith statements on abortion and bodily autonomy. I will definitely be reviewing that uh, and when, when I have a chance to. But the fact is that I, I came here, I, I came in a special election at the beginning of 2006. And those first couple of sessions that I was here, you know, women's issues were a part, women's health care issues were a part of what we talked about, but it really wasn't until the 2010 election when the so-called Tea Party uh, became dominant and we had big changes in our legislative makeup. Prior to that time, we were pretty evenly divided. 76 Republicans, 74 Democrats. We worked together. We found common ground as we would move forward. That election changed things dramatically in that we ended up with only 49 Democrats. We didn't even have to show up for a quorum. Uh, that's how drastic the change was. And it was really with that session that we started to see dramatic changes in how we moved forward with women's health care. Um, 2011, the session that came after that 2010 election, uh, women's health care uh, in the state was cut by two-thirds. Uh, it was an effort to punish Planned Parenthood, but it had huge collateral damage that impacted faith-based health care delivery services, academic-based delivery services, federally qualified health centers all over our state. All of a sudden, Women were losing access to this very necessary care. Uh, it's taken us a while to build that back. We have built it back pretty much by now, but you know, that was 2011. This is a long time ago and it's taking us this long to get built back. And then of course, over that period of time, uh, session after session, we were dealing with, uh, with uh, decreasing access to abortion in particular, but to women's health care in general, but really to abortion. And, and you know, the, the, the tragic thing I think right now for so many of us is the fact that we have one of the highest maternal morbidity and mortality rates in the country, and even in the developed world. And we have made some progress, but we still have a huge way to go to ensure that people have healthy pregnancies and deliveries and can take care of those babies. Um, the other thing I will mention is that over half of the births in this state are Medicaid births. Without access to abortion health care, unplanned pregnancies 
can be dealt with for those that have resources by going to states where this is a legal medical procedure. If you do not have resources, you cannot, you cannot uh, seek health care oftentimes, which means that we will probably have more Medicaid births in this state, more low-income people having babies that they will struggle to raise, uh, that will, and I, I'm, this, to me, we have to talk about fiscal realities, although it sounds heartless the way I'm saying it, but it's going to cost the taxpayers more at the same time. Um, it's going to be, we already know that we've had increased births in our state since the uh, Dobbs decision occurred. Um, we are not up to di where we need to be with our maternal morbidity and mortality data to let us know how that's being impacted, but that remains to be seen. We may, may have recently seen the information that was uh, generated from a research analysis that indicated that there have been a huge number of uh, rape-related pregnancies that have not been able to be terminated. Um, just the list goes on and on. So, you know, there's so, so many ways to look at this with the different faiths um, that it's important that we find, and, and I, have, I struggle with this myself, find ways to convey our faith-based response to these things that are happening. And that's where I rely on y'all to help us do that. Um, some of the good stuff that happened this session, as I said, as a result of y'all's work, oh my gosh, finally we got 12 months postpartum coverage for Medicaid, yay. And, and uh, also got uh, the extension of access to contraceptives from a, getting a one month or two month or maybe even a three month supply to a full 12 month supply, which is huge for people, especially in rural areas, uh, those that have limited resources to get childcare and transportation to get back to get those prescriptions, 12 months, that's gonna help with the uh, unplanned pregnancy issue too. Um, lots of things like that that happened. We got more funding into women's health care, So there were some good things that came out of this session. One of the things that I worked on in particular was um, making sure that period products and diapers were tax-free because right, you know, up until now they have been taxed. <laughs> and we've been working on that session after session after session. It became a priority for the speaker this session and we were able to get that passed, uh, which was just thrilling to be able to finally see these things happen. Personal statement here on my behalf, I mean, what I'm gonna say, anyway, I think part of this had to do with the reaction to being perceived as anti-woman, anti-mom with the abortion restrictions. And so we saw people kind of bend over backwards to make sure we did a few things this time to show how supportive we were of women and families. I'm okay, great, <laughs> bring it on. I, let's support them as much as we can. Um, so there's a lot more to be done. Uh, we're going to need to keep working on this, keep our focus on moms and babies and families because we say we want them. We need to support them and make sure they have what they need.